Take 15. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, or if you've been subscribed for a while, sorry I haven't uploaded in a year. I wanted to do a video about sleep apnea and camping. If you're like me and something like 40% of the other population of adults, you have some form of sleep apnea and you might use a device to help you sleep at night so that you keep breathing, which is good. You want that. You might be kind of concerned if you're new to sleep apnea treatment and camping about is it possible? Can I do it? Is it going to take too much power? What do I have to do to make it so that I can use my CPAP while camping? I promise it's not that difficult. It's actually quite easy. It can be expensive, but it's worth it. Seriously, it's worth it. Still use your CPAP while camping. This is how to do it. So the device I use is the ResMed AirSense 11. This thing, it's pretty good. This is the one that my doctor gave me to get prescribed or whatever. I didn't like check, choose it or anything. Um, the deal with this one is it is super power hungry. This is a 24 volt device, and if you're running it off of DC power, which is typically 12 volts, it has to ramp the voltage up. So you're gonna lose some juice in that. Something to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is this comes with an AC power supply, which plugs into your wall. And when you are converting DC to AC, it's very inefficient, you lose a lot of power. So a little hack that I have to make it easier for me to run this at night while camping is I have this little 65 watt ResMed DC car adapter, which is actually meant for the AirSense Mini, which is like their travel unit. This is not meant to work on this device. ResMed do not condone that. But the plug's the same, the voltage is the same, all of the power specs are the same, and guess what? It works flawlessly. I love this thing. This was, I don't know, like a hundred something bucks and it's worth it because you get a lot more juice out of your batteries when you use this. So I, that's tip number one is use this DC adapter. Even though they say it's not meant for it, I have never had a single problem. Runs all night, every night, no issues. It's perfect. So this one for the AirSense Mini, which is the travel one, it works. Secondly is the battery that I use. I use the EcoFlow River Pro. This is a 720-ish watt-hour battery, and it has a car port, 12-volt DC. It's got a bunch of AC plugs, USBs, all that stuff. This thing's pretty great. I've had some issues with reliability with it. All of those issues have always been fixed by firmware updates. It's never a hardware thing, so keep in mind uh, your mileage may vary. This battery probably cost about five, 600 bucks. Um, they're onto the second version of the River Pro now, which is I think around the same. That's gonna be your biggest price hurdle besides buying the CPAP itself. Um, but there are other battery options. My big recommendation for you would be get the one that's around 700, 800 watt hours at least. That'll probably get you about two nights of use. So for example, last night I had this battery running my Dometic fridge, which was pulling power off of the car as I was driving and stuff. But by the end of the night, when we were ready to go to sleep, this battery was at 80%. And I ran this thing with all of the normal settings that I use at home with the DC power adapter. And this battery this morning, when I woke up, I checked it, was at 47%. So it drained a little over half of the available capacity. So keep that in mind. I think when I have a full 100% uh, percent battery, I'm down to like 60 something percent at the end of the day. So pretty good. You can get about two nights with one of these if you use this setup. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these CPAPs is they have a lot of settings that you can use. This one has the heated uh, air tube and then I have the humidifier on it. I recommend whatever your home settings are, leave them the same. You, a lot of folks say turn off the humidifier, turn off the heated tube while camping, it'll conserve power, and it certainly will. But the issue I have is I don't recommend not running a humidifier. It's just blowing dry air into your face the whole time. It's miserable. You wake up, just you got to drink a lot of water at the night. It's not, I don't do it. The heated tube, I would run without that being on, but I had an issue where if it gets cold enough at night, the moist air traveling through the tube will condensate and turn into water and then your CPAP is just forcing droplets of water into your face. I have a nose piece that so was going up my nose and I was like drowning in my sleep. I'd wake up and I was like, what's going on? So I don't recommend it, just leave the heated tube on. My humidifier I have set to 72 because I don't really like the warm air. I prefer it to be pretty ambient temperature. And that works okay. I get good power out of it. 
Um, you can get solar panels for these batteries that are really inexpensive. I have a folding one that I got for, I don't know, like 120, 130 bucks. There's solid ones that are even cheaper. Who's operating right now? That's cheap. There's uh, solid non-flexible ones that are even cheaper. You can spend about 100 bucks and get a really good solar panel, which would charge this in bright sun in a day, no problem. Um, so yeah, it's all doable if you're hoping to go camping and you have to deal with a CPAP and you're worried about it and you think it's not possible, don't let it discourage you. There's going to be some upfront costs to make it happen, but I promise it's worth it. It's absolutely doable. Just get out and camp. Don't let any of that stop you. And that's all my video is right now. So I just wanted you guys to have a little bit of um, words of encouragement for those of you who stop breathing in your sleep. Okay, I'm going to go. Bye. This time it's in focus.